It's the battle of the big ones, everybody. The Galaxy S20 Ultra versus the iPhone 11 Pro Max. We have huge cameras, huge batteries, and huge screens. Let's dive right in. So first, we're looking at design. iPhone 11 Pro Max has the classic iPhone look, but with that three camera setup that kind of gives some people the heebie-jeebies. By now, I'm pretty over it, and I've grown to the green color, so I do like the look. It is a little thick, but so is the Galaxy S20 Ultra. The Ultra's camera hump is also significantly bigger. It's pretty much a chunk that's gonna keep your device off balance no matter what surface you put it on. But you do have that edge-to-edge -edge Infinity O display with a small hole punch at the top as opposed to the notch on the iPhone 11 Pro. Plus, we have Super AMOLED on the S20 Ultra with Samsung's typically punchy colors. So it's a bit of a matter of preference here, but I'm gonna go with the S20 on this round. And of course, let's talk about those cameras. You have a massive hump on the S20 Ultra and a pretty sizable one on the iPhone 11 Pro Max as well. But you actually have a few more cameras on this one. The iPhone 11 Pro goes with three 12 megapixel cameras for an ultra-wide, regular, and telephoto lens, whereas the S20 Ultra starts with a 108 megapixel main lens, a 48 megapixel telephoto lens, and a 12 megapixel ultra-wide. So things are massively upgraded on here. And what that's gonna allow you is something that the iPhone can't touch, which is 10 times optical zoom and 100 times digital zoom. So you might be wondering how that's gonna look. You think it's gonna be a little bit blurry? It's actually pretty clear. And the reason for this is something that Samsung calls Space Zoom, which is a hybrid between their AI digital stabilization as well as optical stabilization that now includes anti-roll in addition to side to side and up and down. So what that's gonna do is keep those cameras super steady while you're taking those really zoomed in shots and limit as much blur as possible. One thing we haven't had a chance to test yet though is night mode, which is a huge deciding factor for me personally since the iPhone 11 Pro Max was one of my favorites when it came to night mode last year in 2019. At the time, Samsung kind of lagged behind with getting natural and consistent shots with its night mode, so we're gonna have to see how much was improved with the S20 Ultra. Overall, the iPhone 11 Pro was my favorite camera of 2019, but with the kind of spec bump that we're looking at on the S20 Ultra, it's gonna be pretty hard for the 2019 competitor to beat this new 2020 device. And of course, we can't forget about performance. So the S20 has a bit of an edge over here right out of the jump because it includes 5G for both millimeter wave and sub six. So that's gonna be your fastest 5G possible and the more widely available sub six network. The iPhone 11 Pro Max obviously doesn't have 5G yet, but that doesn't count it out just yet. iPhones are well known for their high benchmark speeds on paper and their fluid, seamless performance in hand. So while the S20 Ultra does have its own top of the line silicone running it, it's gonna be a pretty tight race between these two. I'm gonna give this one a tie on this round. The last thing to consider here is price. Where the iPhone 11 Pro Max starts at $1,100, the Galaxy S20 Ultra starts at a whopping $1,400. So you're paying a pretty penny for that cutting edge software and hardware in the new Galaxy S20 Ultra. Whether it's worth it, we can't say just yet, but on initial impressions, it's a pretty tough sell to go back to 2019 with the iPhone 11 Pro. 